Welcome to Cowork Radio. I'm Jane Walker Wood. And I'm Catherine Raymond. And we are here with venture capitalist, UCSB professor, and prolific business author, John Greathouse. And make sure you send your questions to askjohn at coworkradio.com. Hey, John, how are you this week? Doing great. We have a question from Nick. And he wants to know, how do you get in the front door? I mean, there's so many secretaries and it's, you know, lawyers. So how do you Mm -hmm. get to talk to that entrepreneur or that mentor or that investor? So this is a, it's a good question because it's very apropos in today's world. Because right now you can get to anybody. You literally can get to anybody, at least theoretically, and oftentimes you really can. And it's because we have so many forums or direct message on Twitter. I mean, can you imagine trying to direct message, um, you know, Joe Biden, who was here recently? I mean, these people actually do look at their Twitter feeds. Um, And if they don't, they have maybe one one person below them that does. That would have been absolutely impossible a decade ago. Facebook messaging. There's all kinds of different ways that we can that we can reach out. But you have to be you have to reach out with something compelling. I mean, again, there are some filters still in place. You can't um, you got to really be thoughtful about how you do it. I always like the, the, the story that goes way back. Back to the 30s with um, here in Santa Barbara with the creator of Mission Lenin, the way he got a jump on the competition. Like he, so it was just a classic. Um, we talked about hacks uh, a week or two ago. It was a classic entrepreneurial hack where he was his his he was a young person that was trying to create a laundry business, and everyone else would stand on the docks when the big ships would come in with all their dirty laundry. And he was like, why are we all standing here so that we can fight with each other when this ship pulls up? He jumps in a boat, rows out to the ship, and yells up to the captain, cuts a deal, and just you know slowly rolls back, rows back. And by the time the ship got to shore, that deal was done. I love that. And yeah. look, they're still in business. They are still in business. Did, did, did the guys at the dock then beat him up? Uh, <laughs> he did must they have end up big... getting a job with him? I never researched that. He must have been very large, very strong, very yeah. intimidating. Okay. Well, that is such a great story. Yeah, it really I, is. I love that story. Now, it's... nowadays, that would be very difficult because people are so worried about security. Certainly, you couldn't go out to a boat. So right. if that were happening today, how could that guy get past the competition well, to I that think, ship again, captain? I think the... I think you mentioned it about going, not going in the front door. I think um, you have to be mindful of front doors are there for a reason, and they're always guarded. So if if there's a gatekeeper, often physically, if not physically, um, um, you know, electronically in front of that front door to keep people out, their job isn't to let people in. Their job is to keep people out. So how can you go in the side door, the back door, or an alternative? It's the same thing about sending your resume to HR. That's the best way to not get a job because that's what everybody does. So if everyone's zigging, you should be zagging. Try to figure out a way that you can – something that you can do that will make you stand out, make you be memorable. Obviously, you want to be polite and you're not looking to irritate anyone. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Let's say you wanted to get um, – you wanted to meet – an important person or somebody that could be important in your life who's busy and it's hard to get their attention, you might want to try and find somebody that's a bit easier to reach but might be an influencer. So it might be someone that they already work with. It could be a partner of theirs. It could be a customer of theirs. Establish rapport. Deliver value. That's key. Like give before you get. Like figure out a way that you can deliver value to this other person. Establish a rapport. And then at the right time, if the chemistry's right, and then that person can help me meet her. And don't, and you've got to be willing to risk too. Um, yeah. I actually have a friend who years ago in the radio business, instead of sending in a traditional resume, sent in a shoe in a box nice. and said, just trying to get it. my foot in the door. Foot in the door, right. right? Um, but I was... Hopefully it didn't smell. <laughs> exactly. Well, you have to be okay with rejection, It, it too, worked in I that, think. too. Yeah. Jane and I were talking about something that hasn't reached saturation point, and I wondered what your thought was on this, because as you're talking, I'm thinking that side door, that back door, well, soon they become the front door, right? Yeah. I, it yeah. changes. Right. But right now, I know that there has been a big, big rise in... And business texting. So mm-hmm. there's business texting companies. So yeah. I'm getting a text and my my emails may have 5,000 of them. I don't look at my emails anymore. Exactly. Just people don't. Yep. Um, but but I would look at my text. And right. so a lot of businesses are trying that. And for some, it's working. It's more mm-hmm. personal. Some people might think it's a it's little spammy. too intrusive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You got you to, a business to consumer, I think you have to be careful. But I think going back to your because it could feel spammy. Mm-hmm. You're going on to your your foot in the door. I love that because let's say let's say you know that person has a certain personality. Obviously, they had a sort of a fun, mm-hmm. willing to be rejected 
you know, that's fine. I can live with the personality. So if somebody gets that shoe and is somehow offended or put off by it, you don't want to work there. Like, that's a great screen for you. Like, oh, that that upset you? Are you kidding? Like, great. <laughs> Thank you. That's something we talked about in another show about people, you know, being certain about their idea getting stolen. I know that right. now everybody's lawyering up. It used to be in the film business mm-hmm. that you could actually send your screenplays to producers. And now if you do that, it comes back in an envelope from their lawyer saying not nobody, open or, not open, yeah, nobody's right. read this. Right. I, I hope Jane doesn't mind me saying, but in a way, she did that with you to get you on the show. <laughs> um, some people might call it stalking, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you, you went to great lengths to not to, yes, to, to reach out to John in the traditional way. Well, I and did, you do? Uh, but, you know, and then I tried like playing hard to get and telling we've talked to 10 other people too but no um well we wanted somebody on the show to give good advice and i kept reading answers on uh the internet and i kept noticing the same guy's face there Mm -hmm. and i knew that if i wrote on his twitter feed i could see he was kind of putting people off Mm -hmm. there he was politely answering but not Mm -hmm. actually committing right and I didn't want to go through the venture capital because I knew we had to have a secretary. So I shouldn't say how I got to you. I don't have a secretary. But that's okay. You don't? So, I been, but why did you? I don't res- mind if you say. Yeah, so why did you respond? Did you appreciate what she did or so, how she reached you? So your email, I remember it distinctly. It was very thought out. It was you. You were sort of saying, "Hey, John, this might be a good opportunity for you. You obviously enjoy." The teaching element and helping start a community. You're you're part of this community. Here's another way for you to, to guilt, build guilt, on guilt. that. <laughs> no, it was good. I mean, obviously it worked. I I, I think I immediately responded and said, sure, are. if and I can help. Today we brought him a bottle of French wine. I know. When I drank half of it, which is why I, <laughs> I have no idea what we're talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. Yeah, getting in the back door, not the front door. John Greathouse joins us every week and just gets better. Thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. Ask John at CoworkRadio.com. We'll see you next week, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. And after the break, Rodney Lower is here. He is the founder of Aqua Viable, and he literally makes pure water out of the air. You are listening to Cowork Radio. Please follow us on social media and download episodes on iTunes or CoworkRadio.com. We will be right back. 